for the podcast. While the world crumbles around us. What? No. You know what one of the saddest things of my growing up was? What? And I always tell you stories about growing up and you think it's all sad, but mm-hmm. I don't think any of that's sad. What's really sad is that I had to then transition into a world where Cheech and Ice T are TV cops. Mm-hmm. And that's how people know them. <laughs> And then I just had to like go on with the rest of my life. I didn't know where you were going with that, but the, like, yeah. These figures of the anti-establishment then go on to like law and order and whatever, yeah. CSIs, and they're cops. And they're like the most mundane forms of the establishment. Mm-hmm. You fucking saying cop killer. Oh, and yeah. Then... Wow. Shouldn't be playing a cop. No. No, mm. he shouldn't. Cheech being a cop too? Come on. How am I supposed to go about my daily business? Knowing that Ice T and Cheech are cops now. Yeah. All right, start off the podcast. (laughs) Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Love This, You Should Too. We're proud members of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. I'm Samantha, and that's Indy. And we are here to discover what are watching for next week. What are we watching for next week? Uh, yeah, that wasn't a sentence. It, it was. It's not your best sentence, <laughs> no, my, no, but no, it was one. High quality sentence, no. but it was a sentence. <laughs> what are we watching next week? I feel though <laughs> you probably have fewer sentences on the podcast. Yours are of a higher average quality. Oh, that makes me feel good. I might have some good ones, but I have so many garbage ones <laughs> that my average, I think, is lower than yours. <laughs> Possibly. But um, I'm excited to find out what are watching and uh, what we're going to do today. How are you, Indy? Other than I are good. crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I are good. How are you? I are also good as well. All right. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> well, today, like Samantha said, we are going to learn what we are watching for next week's big watch, big analysis. Oh, and it is big. It's an epic one. That was my tease. <laughs> yeah. And this month, I guess, we're doing all stuff from the 2020s because we're kind of doing themes now. Yeah. And I know for a lot of podcasts, that wouldn't be an exciting theme. But for us, and for me especially, who doesn't do a lot of uh, new media, Mm -hmm. it was a bit of a challenge. But then also, not that much because (laughs) I live in the 2020s now, so it was pretty easy to find a few things. Yeah. Did you, you didn't do anything special to prep for the theme, did you? Because you usually, not exclusively, but mostly pick stuff from that's contemporary. So I think because we cast a smaller net than normal on like just bringing in the themes, I, for some reason, struggled really hard to find something. And then I realized that like, yeah, all of the media I consume is pretty much from the 2000s. So I don't understand why... I had such a hard time with it, but I think it was just the fact that there were like hard parameters this time. Because you had to think about it. Because I had this to time. think about it. And then well, was... usually it's just whatever audiobook you finish. Yeah. Which also tends to be from the last five years. Exactly. So I don't know why I struggled, but I think it was just because there were like actual parameters this time. Oh, we're going to have so many more parameters oh, for the next one. Just parameters next forever. Next month is only stuff from 1976. I don't know anything from 1976. Everything good's from 1976. No, I don't know anything from 1976. <laughs> All right, we'll worry about that when we get there. So today we'll each have a thing of the fortnight, something from the 2020s, <laughs> and then I'll let you know what relatively new movie we are going to be watching for the big watch. But before that, let's thank our first sponsor of the episode, and that is Park Power. In Alberta, you get to choose who you buy your internet, electricity, and natural gas from. If you choose Park Power, you are choosing a positive local business. Plus, Park Power shares its profits with local not-for-profits that are working to make a difference for their communities. Shopping local is very important to Park Power, And we love local here at the Alberta Podcast Network, so it's a great fit. To learn more, you can visit parkpower.ca. Okay, Indy, well, do you want to start us off with your thing of the fortnight? My thing of the fortnight, something that is still happening to this day, is the television show It's Always Sunny in (laughs) Philadelphia. I'm a fan. (laughs) Go birds! Ooh, but Uh, didn't work out too well for you. My boy, my boy Mahomes, and not that one 
holding call at the end. No. That's what won it. No, it the was Chiefs. the holding call. You didn't even know what it was. It was a garbage call. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not going to talk about that right now. But what we are going to talk about is the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which debuted in 2005. And they are currently filming their 16th season. So it is still going strong. And I've actually been watching this since 2005. And frankly, I am shocked that it is still going because it's not a show that has seeming wide appeal. Uh And for something that's been going for 16 years, it never got super popular. It is popular enough to be profitable, Mm -hmm. clearly, because they're still going. But it's not, I think, very well known. I, for something that lasted for that long. Yeah. I like I've talked about it a little bit with people and they're like, oh, I've seen a few episodes of that. And like my dad had seen some episodes on a plane. So he kind of knew what I was talking about. But um, yeah, it, I don't know a bunch of people who are like really, really into it. Like we've become. <laughs> so I've been watching this for a long time and I'm bringing it up now, not just because it is still going. So fulfills the 2020s requirement. <laughs> But Samantha finally watched it and you've seen all of it. You got through it real quick. We did. It was um, all of a sudden we were on season 12. (laughs) That's how it felt. And uh, yeah, it was a fun it was a fun ride to see their like lack of growth. I I can't say they grow as characters because they they grow or they become more excessive. Yeah. I don't know that they change, but I think no. they do grow. Because you know how like the a story arc sometimes you grow as a person, you become like more better as a person. And I don't think any of these people become better people. They don't grow, they escalate. They escalate. Escalate's a good way to put it, yeah. So the premise of this show is pretty simple. It's five friends, they work slash own a bar, and they get into kind of wacky situations, although the situations aren't always wacky. And I loved it when it came out because to me, it seemed like a counterpoint to shows like Friends. Mm -hmm. Because Friends, to me, I don't see the appeal. I I know it's very well loved and I'm not going to argue that it's bad. But to me, I never got it because I disliked every one of them. And I was like, but what they're doing right now is objectionably terrible, right? And everyone's like, yeah, they're terrible, but it's fun. They're all good, though. (laughs) So I like this show because in this show also, everyone is terrible. But in this show, they know it. The show knows that these are bad people. Mm -hmm. While like Ross on Friends is a sociopath, but everyone's like, yeah, but remember that one time he yelled pivot a lot? Yeah, That was hilarious. That's quality writing. It's like the only thing that's funny. But I just said I'm not going to shit on Friends. So I'm going to move on. Okay. So I am going to read you something from the Wikipedia page because it's so... uh, succinct and clinical in how it describes it but is completely accurate okay so they refer to this group of friends as the gang and it says each member of the gang exhibits unethical behavior and antisocial traits such as extreme selfishness pathological dishonesty narcissism aggression excessive drinking and substance abuse unregulated emotions cruelty and absolutely no regard for the people around them while also displaying acute codependency stupidity and a surprising lack of awareness of basic social norms the gang has no sense of shame when attempting to get what they want and often engage in activities that others would find humiliating disgusting or shocking some of these situations include pretending to be disabled and becoming addicted to crack cocaine in order to qualify for welfare, attempted cannibalism, kidnapping, waterboarding, blackface, stalking, grave robbing, hiding naked inside a couch to eavesdrop on people, oh my God, tricking yeah. <laughs> a man into giving his daughter a lap dance, foraging naked in the sewers for rings and coins, <laughs> impersonating police officers to extort civilians, creating a cult, secretly feeding someone their dead pet, plugging their open wounds with trash and pretending to have AIDS in order to get priority access to water park rides. <laughs> oh, man, that was like a, a greatest hits. Yeah, I was just going through that. <laughs> yeah. as like, if you're reading it normally, you'd be like, why would anyone watch this yeah. show? But reading it, having watched it, you just go, oh, that was a good episode. Yeah. Oh, that oh, one that was, was a fun funny. one. <laughs> yeah. 
So it is, in fact, about people that are terrible, but mm. this knows it. Yeah. So while you could think of shows like this as like, oh, they're just trying to be edgy and push the limit. And I think a lot of shows that have similar content in ways are trying to be like, yeah, we don't care about your sensitivities. We don't care about woke culture. Look at us. We're doing this. And that's not what this show is. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure people know that this isn't trying to push the envelope to say like, hey, we're not going to conform to how the world is changing. It is actually a very socially conscious show. Mm -hmm. And they have people doing all of these terrible things as a satire of people who believe that kind of thing. Right. The creators of the show, who are the same people who are yes, in it. Yes, they're in it. <laughs> they do not believe the things that their characters believe. And mm -hmm. that's what's an important distinction. And it's also just easy to dismiss this show as just a bunch of people yelling over each other. And... It is that, but once you see what they're doing, I think it's quite brilliant, really. How the show is constructed allows for a lot of freedom because the writers are the actors and creators, so they're making everything, essentially. It's mostly the three characters who, uh, who do all of the writing mm -hmm. and uh, really guide what the show is becoming or has become. And it's so much fun to watch these characters develop. I think develop mm -hmm. and uh, or at least escalate. Escalate. <laughs> because there are little inklings of things that you see way back 16 years ago. And you get to see those little things that were maybe just a throwaway joke at one point. But now that we've been with the characters for that long, they get to bloom into full-blown character traits. And yeah. a lot of those are really fun. And then when they break from the format, the basic format just being... Something happens, it usually takes place in their bar, and um, they're terrible, they sometimes win, but they mostly lose at the end, mm -hmm. and then you're just back where you started from. Yeah, that's the basic format. That's what I kind of like about that show, is that most everything resets every episode. And that's kind of just like a sitcom Yeah. Thing. But I do think the characters don't just reset, which is different for more, most mm -hmm. sitcoms. Because if something happened to them, they're going to make reference to that 10 years later. And it does affect who they are. And they remember things they've done in the past. Except for sometimes when it is used for comedic purpose that they keep meeting the same person mm -hmm. and forgetting who they are constantly. Yeah. But when they break from that format, that's also uh, makes for some amazing television because... They'll have some episodes that are straight up musicals. Yeah. Doesn't happen a lot, but that happens. There's dance numbers. Sometimes there's fun technical stuff where one episode is all one shot or at least made to look like it. And then they have some episodes that are genuinely heartfelt. And on a show that is just the worst or the people that are just <laughs> terrible constantly, when you get something like that, it really makes you stop and appreciate it. And mm -hmm. they kind of just do like one episode per season that's like that really. But mm -hmm. those ones are really fun too. I found this show, even though we said they're like awful people and they don't really learn any lessons and they just continue to get to kind of stay in awfulness throughout the entire show. I found it very heartwarming because um, there are some family dynamics in this and um, I think thought that the way that they continuously bring the characters together is really nice. And even if the characters aren't learning anything, you can tell that the minds behind the show mm -hmm. are learning things by what these characters do. They may, be, may not learn the lessons themselves, but showing the lessons that they refuse to learn shows mm -hmm. the growth of maybe the minds behind the show. Yeah, yeah. Because they're drawing attention to look how stupid this is. Yeah. And while something may not have been stupid enough for these characters to do in season three, now it is. And mm -hmm. that's showing that the, the creative minds are saying like, yeah, that is wrong also now. So it's kind of the opposite that if the main characters on the show are doing something, yeah. you know that it is a condemnation of that thing by the writing staff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And it also seems like maybe my ideal job would be to write for this. Yeah. Because I love writing comedy is one of my very favorite things to do. I don't really do it anymore because I probably wasn't ever, <laughs> you know, good at it. But to write on something like this, when you're writing with your friends and you have the basis set, like you know what the show is going to be, 
And then you just get to play with it in little ways. Mm -hmm. I love that more than when I would write a brand new movie from scratch. It's so much more fun to have something established and then you can play with those expectations. And that's what they do really well on this show. And there's a podcast now where they, the creators themselves will watch the episodes Mm -hmm. and then talk about it. And I love that because most people don't want to know the nuances of writing comedy because it's not funny to explain why something's funny. Right. But to someone who writes comedy, it's so interesting. And I love how much thought they put into every little thing because to most people, one line is just a throwaway line of somebody falling in garbage. And then they explain like, oh, no, we talked about that for three days. And here's why we chose to do it like that. Mm. And things like that are very interesting to me. And the fact that they will turn things down because they'll say like, no, that character wouldn't do that. Even if it's the most ridiculous thing, because they're always doing ridiculous things, Mm -hmm. but they have the lines and that's why the characters always feel true to themselves. Right. They are all like, yeah, idiots or sociopaths or whatever, but they are always very defined, I feel like. And their actions aren't interchangeable. Like one character wouldn't do the same things. Right. And I feel like in a lot of sitcoms, especially long running ones, they don't really have that. And it's just wackiness for the sake of wackiness. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of wackiness, but every character seems so well defined, even in how absurd they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely think this show is fun because they can interchange the characters and who's kind of starring in the episode i guess if things get a little too formulaic they'll throw like an episode of this person and then an episode of this person and then you kind of get a different feel for different storylines like when you get a charlie and d episode Mm -hmm. they don't get matched up together very very often often. but they're hilarious together and When you get different pairs working off each other, because I think that's the strength of the show. It's them working off one another rather than any one character doing something Mm -hmm. funny or some sort of performance. It's how they interact and watching those different interactions and how the interactions change based on who is like around to watch them, how performative they are for each other, like the characters are. It's a show that seems so, so stupid. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah, it is, but it's so smart in how it's being (laughs) stupid. There's so much thought put into the stupidity of this show. That's, yeah, you can definitely tell. And I also loved it when it was first coming out because it was so low budget and just a bunch of friends making a show. And that's kind of the stuff that I was making at the time. So it kind of gave hope to like a shitty filmmaker like myself way back then. And we went back recently after making it to like season 13 or something. Um, We went back and watched one of like season four or three or something. And I was just like, man, I did not realize one, how much they've aged and also just how low quality the first couple seasons are. Oh, it looks terrible. Yeah, and how good the quality got. Because when you watch them in really rapid succession, things change just a little bit slowly. And then all of a sudden you're watching like a really high quality TV show. But if you look at even the new high quality ones Mm -hmm. relative to other things that are made now, it does look quite bad. But it's because how they make it and they make it very quickly. And but we don't need to get into their whole production (laughs) thing. It fits the show. It should look bad. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they make the characters look bad. And it's not afraid to make people look bad because these are not supposed to be likable characters. Mm -hmm. It's rare that you'll have a character, especially women on TV, that they try to look bad and that they look better in their day-to-day life. Mm -hmm. Usually you just get an Oscar if you do that. Like Charlize Theron (laughs) monster or something like that, right? You just don't look pretty in a movie and you get an Oscar. But they're doing it for comedy's sake, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, we had to look like trash because we were playing trash people. Yeah. It's not like everyone is gorgeous and then they're like, oh, yeah, I'm also homeless. Like, that's Mm -hmm. not how the world really looks. And this looks probably more like the world really looks, at least the shitty parts of the world. Yeah, I just, I'd say so. So that's it. That's my thing of the Fortnite that is. Sure, from 2005 to start, but is still going on now. And you can watch the first, I think, 13 seasons are available on Disney Plus in Canada. And I think maybe even 14 for the Americans, maybe? I'm not 100% sure how different Disney Plus is in the U.S. I think it just might be release dates a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there are 15 seasons out. They are 
pretty great and uh 16th on the way so check out it's always sunny in philadelphia i will understand if you watch one episode and you're like no this is terrible i can't watch that <laughs> you know what give it some time give you it, might give love it, it three to four episodes coming from someone who recently just started it I when guess. you first saw it were you like oh i went in with your like heavy recommendation and then like just like waited out a little bit you had told me like you're gonna think it's just a lot of screaming and then you'll really grow to be attached to the characters and then you're gonna want to watch all of it (laughs) so i went in knowing that so i think if you go in thinking that you'll be hooked by episode five (laughs) Woo! high recommendation all right samantha how about you what's your contemporary thing of the fortnight um my contemporary thing of the fortnight is a audiobook called people like her by ellery lloyd oh another ellery lloyd i think you had that just a couple of weeks ago what's this one about so this one is kind of interesting as it's it's very contemporary because it deals with like influencers and social media and like kind of safety of families who are in those kind of situations. Um, So it kind of centers on a mom called Emmy Jackson, who is the mama bear. And uh, she's... What, you said that like it's capitalized. What, should I know what saying no, the mama bear That's means? her brand. That's like she's oh, okay. the mama bear. Um, and she's an insta mom who is always telling people how it is. And so um, the story kind of centers around her and her family and um, how there's like a really fine balance between sharing too much and um, like losing your brand altogether. Um, And then there's an obsessive follower um, who comes out of the woodwork and um, slowly gets worked into the story more and more. And there's a big twist at the end. And you think you know what's happening right until like the last 20 pages. So what type of book is this? Is this another what Samantha would call a twisty, turny thriller? Yeah, (laughs) I was going to say twisty, turny thriller. Um, So I definitely think that if you liked some of my other recommendations, I feel like I say this every time, um, but you'll like this one um, because it's very like psychological. And you get a lot of um, kind of real things from the world as it is now, um, like influencers and being really open with your life choices and that kind of thing on the internet and how quickly things can turn against you. Um, So I thought that was a really interesting way to take one of these books. Is this a cautionary tale for influencers? I I would say so. I mean, obviously, because there's like a crazy fan involved, maybe that isn't going to happen to you. But it's definitely a like, be careful with what you share kind of approach. That's why I never share much on this podcast. <laughs> on this podcast? Yeah, because you know all of our fans are so like, crazy. They could turn on us in a minute. We only have the, the five fans, right? I think so. Maybe we might be up to six. But yeah, so this is kind of an interesting um, contemporary take on a thriller. And it's called People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. How was the narration? It was really good. Um, there was two narrators there's a male narrator and a female narrator and the female narrator did kind of an older woman voice as well and it was really impressive actually how they managed to switch between these two voices but i want molasses on my pancakes like that yeah but yeah it was definitely it was fun to listen to and i feel like audiobooks now are a little bit more of a production like they oftentimes we'll have like a cast so this was one of those ones where you where you get multiple voices so our second sponsor of the episode is bloom want to get a handle on edmonton's growing innovation scene take a listen to bloom taproot's newest podcast each week hosts karen unlin and fazia ramji will discuss the latest developments in efforts to solve new problems and diversity in the economy Find out who has invented what, who is investing in whom, and what is on the horizon. Find Bloom wherever you listen to podcasts or visit bloom.taprootedmonton.ca. 
Okay, Indy, it's time. What is your big watch for next week? For next week, we are going to be watching the 2022 Ooh, so new. Indian epic action drama historical fiction best friend musical <laughs> RRR. Woo! It's finally happening, it's people. It's finally happening. So I don't know how much I even need to say. If you've listened to this podcast before, back on episode 174, it was my thing of the week. And then again on episode 193, our 2022 things of the year, I mentioned it as my movie of the year. So it's something I've talked about before. In case you've missed those and you need a pitch on it, this is a movie that has, um, I can't remember how I phrased it before, but it has <laughs> the religious allegory of Superman. It has better dances than Chicago. It has a better best friend story than Top Gun. Whoa. High praise. It has better action sequences than Infinity War. It just does everything. And you're like, how could you fit that into one movie? Well, first of all, you make it three hours. Yeah. So that helps. <laughs> and then you just don't stop. You just always go, go, go. This is a movie that I equated to being on a roller coaster ride because talking about it just doesn't do it any sort of justice. I can tell you how great this action sequence is all you want, but you need to see it. Yes. So it is available on Netflix. And that will be the Hindi dub. It is a Telugu movie, but Hindi is probably the best bet for most people out there because it is the actors themselves that are doing that version. For some reason on Canadian Netflix, it defaults to Brazilian Portuguese. So don't, oh, yeah. don't change, watch it in that. Change the dub. <laughs> watch it in Hindi. But if you do want the original language version, I have access to a dual audio one so you can hear it how it was originally meant to be listened to. But honestly, the Hindi dub is good because uh, like a lot of Indian movies, this is 80 yard, meaning that it, the actors usually dub themselves in even in the original language. Oh, I didn't know that. So you can hear it just sounds a little off. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a podcast. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like it was recorded live because everyone whispers and it's just like right in your ears all the time. <laughs> it's one of those types of movies yeah. because that's just uh, how most movies in India are made. So I don't think you'll lose much from the Hindi version because all of the songs are also re-recorded in Hindi mm -hmm. because they do this soundtrack in, I think, four languages because that's how Indian filmmaking works. <laughs> you know what? I think maybe I just won't say much more. We'll save it for the next episode, but it is long. It yeah. is three hours long. I first sat down to watch it thinking I would watch it 20 minutes at a time and just kind of see it over the week. And even though it was after midnight, I ended up staying up and watching the whole thing because it was <laughs> that epic engrossing. Ah. It just it it grabs you and it doesn't let go for three hours. So if you've heard me talk about this and you're looking for an excuse to watch it, this is your excuse. Watch it. We're going to talk about it. It might be a pretty long episode next <laughs> week because there's so much to it. Even if we talk about it for three hours, we won't talk about it for three hours. No. But even if we did, we wouldn't get through like the layers of substance of this mm -hmm. movie and how many things I'd like to talk about. <laughs> because it is a movie for filmmakers. Yeah. You can watch it and admire the craft and it makes you want to watch more movies it's a movie for people who just like popcorn movies if you just want to sit back and just watch the colors fly by because it is amazing to look at it's a movie for people who love the genre films because it's a musical it's a hardcore action it's sometimes it's a romance it's <laughs> all over the place it has a little bit of something for everyone and if you want an introduction to perhaps a style of filmmaking or even a country that you haven't seen films from this is i don't know if it's a great introduction to indian cinema because it is kind of its own thing but there are a lot of films kind of like this coming out over the last 10 years so it is um it's just a spectacle to behold mm -hmm. i'm excited to watch it again i'm excited to watch all the dance scenes 
There's some good dancing. Some good dancing, some good songs. If you just listen to the RRR soundtrack, it's epic. The songs, there's sometimes they break into songs. Sometimes the soundtrack sings about what's going on. Yeah. Sometimes the characters just narrate their thoughts through song. It's all sorts of different things, but... I could talk about it for such a long time, but I don't need to because that's what we're going to do next week. Yes. So check it out. It's on Netflix if you have that. If you need a copy, let me know. Maybe I can do something for you. <laughs> so watch RRR, sometimes called Rise, Roar, Revolt. But most places you can just search RRR. And we'll talk even about why it's called that later on. Sounds good. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Wait one moment. It's time to drink wine. Is that what you say when you wake up every morning? No. <laughs> <laughs>